State hosts Miami in one of college football's great rivalries. There is no love lost, and there are no holds barred when these teams meet. Every game is played like it's the only one in the season that matters. But a victory this year moves the winner closer to a national championship. The loser waits till next year. And the only certainty is that few players will emerge unscathed. Miami has always been known for a big play offense. But head coach Jimmy Johnson has the defense to carry his team this year. Bobby Bowden runs his squad with characteristic flair and has a high-flying offense to match. Florida's most explosive teams converge to settle a score. Number three, Miami, battles number four, Florida State, today on CBS Sports. the capital of the great state of Florida and the polls this week will show you the importance of this game. Number three, the Hurricanes of Miami take on number four, the Seminoles of Florida State. Without a doubt, this is the game of the week. You know, some 40 years ago, Florida State was a girls' school. Then it became co-ed. In the 50s, they started building Joe Campbell Stadium. Held only 9,000 then. This afternoon, we'll have a crowd in excess of 63,000 watching today in a game that will carry ramifications as far as the national championship is concerned. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. We're going to be talking throughout the day about the national championship, what this game means. But Coach Bobby Bowden of Florida State says, hold on, everybody. There's something else we got to do before we can even think about a national title. Our goal with our players has always been to let's go after them. Let's try to win a national championship, you know. This is the first year we changed it. Our number one goal, win the state championship. That will get you a shot at the national championship. Florida State's recognized as being one of the better teams in the country. I think University of Miami is in the same position. A winner of this will go to a new plateau, and I, I think everybody around the country will say, hey, you know, they are for real. So you think about this state, Pat Hayden, also the University of Florida and LSU tonight. But let's talk about what this game means as far as the national title is concerned. Well, Brent, both of these teams are capable of winning a national championship, but I believe you have to get to the Orange Bowl to do so, because that's where either Oklahoma or Nebraska will be. Probably Probably undefeated. Now, if Miami wins this game, they have the easier remaining schedule. Only Notre Dame, I think, has a chance of beating them. Florida State still has to go to Auburn and to Florida, and that would be much more difficult for them. Now, Clemson and Notre Dame are both idle today. Clemson players are probably pulling hard for Florida State to win this game because the Seminoles have tough games at Auburn and also Florida. Notre Dame is watching, and they should be saying, go Canes, because they look them straight in the eyeballs in November down in Miami. Now, we're going to check in with you. Jim Nance, find out what's going on this busy Saturday, and then we'll come back here to Tallahassee. Jim? All right, Brent, there is a lot of action to report early, including number one, Oklahoma, taking on Iowa State. Sooners scoring on their first two possessions, Collins and Stafford getting, into the, uh, getting it into the end zone for Oklahoma, and the Sooners lead it 14 to nothing. Now, here's a surprise. Auburn against North Carolina, 3-3 that just started the third quarter. Auburn managed only 61 yards total offense in the first half, and they're tied with the Tar Heels right now in the third. Now, Tennessee well in front of California, and a couple of offensive stars today for the Volunteers, namely quarterback Jeff Francis. 14 out of 16 so far in the game and one touchdown pass this the screen pass to Reggie Cobb Cobb a freshman has scored three times today giving him 10 on the season which is tops in the NCAA in Tennessee just running away with it there another surprise Texas Tech 10 up on Texas A&M that is in halftime now in Lubbock and the Ra Red Raiders get off to a terrific start when the ice cube touched the ball for the first time for Texas Tech Tyrone Thurman, 5'3", 130 yards, and he sails 74 yards and helps ignite the Raiders now to a 10-point lead over A&M. Michigan State at Iowa, Big Ten opener for both teams. Danny McGuire started at quarterback for the Hawkeyes. He has gone the entire way because he's looked good here today. Here's one of the two scores now for McGuire. In fact, it's the go-ahead score at the moment. Danny McGuire to Travis Watkins. It covers 14 yards, and Iowa leads it by seven just starting the third. And in the Ivy League, Penn over Columbia. 
three to nothing. Now, should the Lions lose today, they would tie the losing streak of Northwestern at 34. A baseball note. This morning in St. Louis, Mets GM Frank Cashin announced that manager Davey Johnson would return to manage the team in 1988. But according to Cashin, Johnson will step down as manager in 1989 and take a front office position at that time. Now, we have Miami and Florida State coming up. We'll continue on CBS Sports in just a moment. Third-ranked Miami taking on fourth-ranked Florida State. We'll take you back to Tallahassee and rejoin Brent and Era after this word from your local station. A glorious day in Tallahassee for Florida State against Miami, but notice the bottom of our weather graphic. That wind, 15 to 20 miles an hour, it'll be blowing from the left to the right. The hurricane warnings are indeed up, and the wind will affect the passing game and the kicking games here this afternoon. You know, we think about Florida State. This is one of the most imaginative teams in all of college football. They have got a great coach in Bobby Bowden. What he told us yesterday is, when Miami expects us to pass, we're going to run and vice versa. That's the only way we can keep this great defense off of us. Now, Danny McManus on the left had the Seminoles ahead of the Hurricanes last year. He suffered an injury down in the Orange Bowl that knocked him out. And Ronald Lewis is his great outside flanker. Watch for the end of round. We think of Miami, Pat Hayden, the great quarterbacks, Vinny Testaverde, but they're changing their image. Well, their offense has been so entertaining the last few years, we've forgotten how good their defense is. They are sensational. In two games against pretty good opponents, 11 sacks, five interceptions, and no one has scored on this defense. Four down linemen, which you don't see much in college football, they are led by Danny Stuck. Now, he can rush the passer, and this is his kind of game because Florida State likes to throw the ball, and he's ready. <laughs> I guarantee you. Make it easy, Danny. That's one of your teammates. It's just warm-ups, yeah. But he can really put some pressure on the passer. You know, they've got a great secondary. Pat, you were telling me that it's the best in college football. And for more on that, let's go to a former defensive back. Here's our John Dockery. John? They call themselves Benny and the Jets, and they are simply the finest defensive backfield in college football. And they are led by the finest defensive back in college football right now, number 36, Benny Blades, the free safety. He's an All-American and will most likely be one of the top five players picked in next year's NFL draft. But besides that, they're a unit that's played together for three years, and that gives them the communication, the chemistry, to be an outstanding group. And it was interesting talking to Danny McManus yesterday. He told me to complete a pass against Benny and the Jets, you have to make the perfect throw. And that's a large burden on any quarterback. All right, John and Benny and the Jets and the Hurricanes getting ready to come onto the field here at Tallahassee. This is a team that impressively has defeated both Florida and Arkansas. They went into the state of Arkansas and they leveled the Razorbacks a week ago. That Jimmy Johnson's alma mater, he did not treat them kindly. So they have risen to number three in the polls, thinking of going higher. Meanwhile, Florida State being led out by Renegade and Chief Osceola. State played alongside of the Miami players. They were high school teammates, and here come the Canes now. Jimmy Johnson, who has a tremendous road record during the regular season, having lost only once, and that was in Ann Arbor to Michigan. So it's coming your way. Three against four. The shootout in Florida when we continue in a moment. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Docus Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida. It's the Miami Hurricanes versus the Florida State Seminoles. Today's CFA game is sponsored by your Toyota dealer and the all-new Dimension 88 Corolla. Who could College football. Chief Osceola on Renegade. The stage is set in Tallahassee. Let's go downstairs now to our John Dockery. John? Brent, the noise level down here is incredible. I was in the locker room before the game with Bobby Bowden. 
He said, take it to him early, pound the line of scrimmage. You'll see a big physical early game plan from Florida State. And then as a way out, they said, find a way. That was his thing. Find a way to win. This is an opportunity. Now back to you, Brent. Edgar Bennis to kick it off for Miami. Last year, Florida State returned a kickoff with a trick lateral. Keith Ross to Dexter Carter. They're the two deep men again. Carter coming out. Short of the 20 yard line. The offense for Florida State here this afternoon. The trigger man, Danny McManus. Now behind him, he'll have Dexter Carter and Dane Williams starting. His wide receivers. Herb Gaynor and Ronald Lewis. And we get a late change. Sammy Smith, 33, will open at tailback here this afternoon. So they're going to go with the big fella, and they may pound ahead with it. On first down, they run Smith. And so Pat Hayden, the stage is stuck for Bobby Bowden's strategy. Very nice first play, off tackle with him, but Mark Salva is the center. He needs a key day today against George Myra, the middle linebacker. This offensive line of Florida State is a solid offensive line. The keys, though, I believe, are the tackles. The tackles have to play well, Cumberland in particularly against Stubbs on defense. And a great tight end in Pat Carter. Upstairs in the coaches' booth, they'll be watching to see if he can hold Stubbs out early. From the tailback spot, they come hard with Smith. Let's take a look at this Miami defense and what a group we've got. Up front, Greg Mark and Derwin Jones. As Pat told you, this is a 4-3. Stubbs and Bill Hawkins. Hawkins underrated. The linebackers, George Myra Jr., his father wants a quarterback at Miami. The outside men, Rod Carter, great pursuit from the backside. You got to watch him along with Randy Shannon. Marion Butts working at fullback. A timeout, Florida State, here early in the first half. Now, ordinarily, you would say, why waste a timeout? But Coach Bowden said, in the first half, I don't care when they use him. If there's a problem out there, get a timeout and come over. Now, obviously, McManus has been confused by the defense somewhere. Well, there shouldn't be a problem, actually, on third and one, but McManus really did do the right thing. If, in fact, the play was brought in incorrectly, you call timeout, it's third and one, which you don't want to have here is a bad play and be forced to punt into this win. McManus out of Daniel, Florida. Actually went to his high school in Hollywood, Florida. You know, Brent, you talked about Florida State being unpredictable on offense. This is a third and one. In short, uh, shorted situations this year, Florida State has thrown the ball 40% of the time, which I find remarkable. The defense here of Miami is keyed by two players. You're going to see Stubbs, who plays right here. He is the defensive end, and Benny Blades, who's out of the picture, who is the free safety. What they try to do is funnel everything outside, get everything to the boundary, bounce everything, and they have got great speed to run you down or to use the boundary as an extra defender. Now, they're going with the big bull backfield. 245, butts at full. 220, Smith at tail. the tail back into an opening for a first down and out of bounds at the 37 yard line first down for the Seminoles on an 11 yard burst by Smith you have to remember Sammy Smith although he weighs 220 pounds he may be the fastest back in America they say legitimately he runs a 4 3 40 which is awfully fast that's motoring the block of the tight end on the bottom of the screen is the key, and that is one of the big keys today. That is Pat Carter on number 22, Randy Shannon. He just kicks Shannon out and opens up a gaping hole for Sammy Smith. Now McManus working against the wind on first down. They're going to keep it on the ground. They're moving the ball on the ground. Smith is the pivotal figure in this game so far, and they are getting to attack the linebackers. Now, one of the reasons why you've got to be careful when you pass right here, Donald Ellis, Tolbert Bain, these names, it sounds like I've been reading them to you for the last 10 years, Selwyn Brown, and of course, the great Benny Blades. Al McManus eyeing that defense with a second and five. Smith, the offensive line of Florida State doing a marvelous job. George Myra bringing him down, and he may have another first down on that run already in this game. 
Prince. Now, Florida State, I can't believe it, but ran five reverses in one game last week. And what they've done here in this first series on three different plays, they brought the flanker around and faked the reverse. They've given the ball to Smith, but everybody in the secondary is looking for the reverse. That, of course, freezes up one of the linebackers. They must stay at home also because it's a play that the coaches and the players looked at frequently down in Miami. One of the things that may have hurt Miami is the ease with which they beat Arkansas. They'll have to strap it on a little bit tighter. Here. They run the fullback right straight ahead, and that is Marion Butts, a sophomore out of Sylvester, Georgia. And again, George Myra Jr. in to bring him down. We talked about one of the key blocks was the tight end, Pat Carter, against Stubbs, the All-American defensive end. This time, he's just going to knock him out and take him completely out of the play. Now, Stubbs does take an upfield rush. You see the big hole right there? Big hole on the right side. Stubbs is actually stunning out of the play. Dexter Carter checks in for the first time at tail. Here he is. He carries immediately into Miami territory, down near the 45-yard line. It'll be third. It's going to be almost three yards to go for the first down. Just about three yards they're going to have to get out of this third down play. Carter not as durable as Sammy Smith. Smith, after all, is 220, and Carter goes about 165. So the Miami Vice, if you will, what they have done defensively so far. But this an impressive drive on the ground. Seven plays all on the ground by the Seminoles. Here comes the end around. Lewis, the play they've been looking for, and he does not get the first down. Tolbert Bain, number 18, the first to hit him. This defensive backfield of, of uh, Miami play like linebackers. Tremendous support from Bain and from Blades, the free safety. Braids, Blades, watch both seats, but Blades and the corners are up here, and they're going to come up and support on the reverse. Now, they're very plain discipline. They stay at home. The bottom of the screen is number 18, Bain. He turns it inside, and right there is Blades to make the stop short. Bad the snap down. to Rick Toot in the putter, but he gets it off. He made the best of a bad snap, and it's down on the 10-yard line. Cleveland Gary, the putter who punted for Miami's national championship team. Rick Tootin just saved the moment. We'll be right back. Well, will they play? The NFL returns tomorrow on CBS Sports. Not only did Rick Tootin punt for Miami their championship year of 83, but this summer he lost 20 pounds battling a form of tuberculosis. And here he is with a low snap coming away with a line drive punt. And doctors fearing he might spread the disease kept him out of school until late August. Now he takes heavy doses of antibiotics and he becomes a key man in this game this afternoon. First and 10 for Walsh and the Hurricanes. Bad field position, and they run Williams with penalty markers down. That's why Williams stopped on the play. And give that penalty to the crowd, Brent. It's awfully noisy down there, backed up into the end zone. Steve Walsh, the first thing he did when he ran on the field was talk to the official about the crowd noise. Steve Walsh and the offense. Dead ball, movement in the offensive line, gets the offense. Still playing first down. A first and 15 from the eye with Bratton and Williams behind Walsh. Williams again. He broke the first tackle. Now let's meet these gentlemen. Walsh, the quarterback, you know that story. He replaces Testaverde. Bratton moves from tailback to fullback, but he's been there before. The wide receivers are superb. Benny's brother, Brian, and Michael Irvin, 47. And they're in a jam right now, Pat Hayden. Miami has been absolutely unbelievable on offense, as you can see. 25 per, uh, possessions and 15 scores. And Steve Walsh has pulled the trigger, made all the right decisions in his first two games. They run Williams on the delay into the middle. Not wanting a mistake, not wanting to turn it over now. And that off.
offensive line. Pat, what about this line? Rod Holder takes over center this year. They are excellent pass protectors, Brent. What happens here is they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and you get very little pressure on the quarterback from the inside, and a very good tight end as well. Now it is third down and 11 yards to go for Walsh and the Kings. First pass incomplete. Blades with a hand on it, and Dion Sanders, number two, ripped into him on that side. One of the best corners in college football. Now, get ready for an all out attack on the punter. This is Florida State specialty, and they have had Fiegels backed up here before. Look at that statistic 22 punts and six field goals, and they got to Fiegels twice. A couple of years ago here in Tallahassee. Pegese the center. He's had some problems. It's a good snap. Under pressure, it's partially blocked. I believe somebody got to it. It'll go out of bounds inside the 50. They're going to get decent field position. A 31-yard punt. They come after him right away. Of it. No, but they hurried the punt. There was pressure right here from number 37, Stan Shiver, and Eric Williams, number 17, from the outside. And even though they didn't get it, they hurried the punt and only a 31-yard punt with a big win behind them. And again, that sets up the rest of the day to that punter is going to be concerned about that all day long. Now his protector took an outside man and let the pressure come right down the middle. The first place you got to check on a punt is for that leakage in the middle of that line because that's the shortest distance to the punter if they can get through you there. But now, McManus and Florida State will take over. This is a first and 10 on the Miami 40-yard line. Butts and Smith, the full backfield back in there, and Smith on first down is hammered that time. That was Randy Shannon along with Greg Mark. You don't see much four down line uh, in play in college football because it's tough to find defensive linemen, Brent. But what Jimmy Johnson does is Miami, he recruits linebackers. He beats them, beefs them up in the weight room for a couple of years, then puts them down in the line and puts their ears back. They've had great success turning linebackers into defensive linemen. Passing spot against the wind. Let's see what Bowden elects to do here. He'll run Smith. Back through the middle. Hammering inside the 30. So when they expect us to pass, we'll go with the run. Bobby Bowden's offense is always going to keep you on your heels. But I want to tell you, Daniel Stubbs is taking himself out of the play with an outside charge. And in the inside, you see Stubbs at the top of the screen. He is blocked out. And then the fullback blocks right on Randy Shannon, number 22. And the fullback is a good lead blocker. Your tailback, your eye back, is going to pick up big yardage. Pat. Carter is doing a sensational job at tight end. We had heard he was All-American caliber, but he has been great. Oh, tremendous defensive play by Bill Hawkins, number 54. One-time high school teammate of Danny McManus. He just ripped in there that time. They both played in Hollywood, Florida. You know, he is the underrated defensive end. Hawkins is playing on the other side of Stubbs. And people forget about him sometimes because he's on the back side. But he is very quick off the ball. This entire front four uh, crowd that ball and really get off of the snap count. So along with Pat Hayden, I'm Brent Musburger, Tallahassee, Florida. Nice to have you here. This is number three and number four. It's a dandy. A deep drop by McManus. And the receiver was all alone there. Hit him at the 23-yard line. That's the tight end, Pat Carter. So not only has he blocked, but he also breaks free to catch passes. You know, Florida State really spreads the ball around. Their tight ends have caught 13 balls this year. That's the ninth catch by Carter. And when the tight end catches the ball, it means your quarterback is doing a very good job of reading the defense. How good is Pat Carter? I had a coach tell me yesterday, he may not be as good a receiver as Keith Jackson at Oklahoma, but he's a better blocker. This is third and five. Dexter Carter comes in at tailback. This is Carter. He's cut off. Great defensive pursuit, and Daniel Stubbs makes the big play. The old Stubbs was on the weak side of the formation, and again, that is his forte, chasing, chasing Stubbs. He's number 96, and he's just going to chase down the line of scrimmage and use that tremendous speed he has to run the play down. 
Remember, the man is 255 pounds, but he is quick. That's what makes him a great pass rusher. They may have to keep Carter covering him all game. And now Schmidt will attempt a field goal of 40 yards. Bad snap. Ball is free at midfield. Miami scoops it up on the run. And now Danny McManus comes back on it. It'll be Miami's ball right there. That was Randy Shannon who scooped it up in midfield. And McManus hustling back, but a break for the Hurricane. Well, this is incredible because Jimmy Johnson was so concerned about his snappers punting, uh, snapping the ball over the kickers and punters' heads. And here it comes through. It's actually over and to the outside. McManus is just trying to pick somebody out, and there is Randy Shannon to make the play. McManus is just trying to make something good out of a very bad situation. <laughs> First and ten for Walsh. There was something unusual about that snap. We're going to show it to you again. I think McManus was checking for a spot and didn't expect the snap. I think the snap was a good one. I want to check it again. On first down, this is Williams, and he's buried by the Seminole defense, led by Eric Hayes. Pat, pick up this telestrator and center McManus where he's looking. Here's the snap. Now watch McManus on this, everybody. Let me see if we picked up something here. I think he's looking at the spot when the snap comes. You bet he is. Yeah, he never right. even saw it coming. Yep. He did not signal for the snap, and they hiked it to him, and that's what the problem was. And that's the center's fault. His responsibility is to wait till the holder gives him the signal. And now we've got a second down for Walsh. He'll pull out and throw it. Remember, he's the wind in his back, and hits the tight end Henry inside the 15-yard line. They get a first down. Miami threatening to score first. Well, both of these two teams effectively use the tight end. Charles Henry caught six passes a week ago, and I want to tell you, when you've got a guy like Michael Irvin on the outside, you've got to be able to get the ball to your tight end because they're going to double up on your outside guys. So the Seminole defense under severe pressure here. With 4.40 to go in the first quarter and no score. Williams sweeping behind Bratton, and the Seminole defense was equal to that task. Greg Newell came up from the free safety spot, number 40. Now another man to watch was in on that stop two, and that is Paul McGowan, number 38. He's the linebacker and their leading tackler in this defense. They'll try to funnel things into his hands if they can. Now it's second and ten, and days gone by. This was automatic situation for testimony. Let's see what Walsh comes up with. They'll run out of it. They sweep Bratton. He cannot get the corner. Deion Sanders, the All-American corner, was there to hold him down, and they exchange pleasantries there at the sideline. Okay, these Florida State defense can run as well as the Miami team. They forward, they bounce it, the ball outside. That was supposed to go off tackle, but it gets bounced outside and pushed to number two, Sanders. You're not going to outrun him. Bratton's a pretty big back, but it's a good job of tackling there by Sanders. Goes high on him. Now the third down. The ball is at the 11-yard line. They can get a first down inside the five. They will have... This formation shows Irvin in the slot as they back away from it momentarily. He's out to the left side of your screen. Now Walsh, who's having some difficulty being heard, blades his nine to his right. The call is at the line of scrimmage. He wants to be heard. Gets his protection incomplete. Irvin had not broken to the spot that time, Pat. It was very good coverage by the entire secondary. He called the audible thinking that he could get the quick out, but exceedingly good coverage. Everybody is sticking. Irving's the man in the slot. He believes he can get him on the out route. See, there's a little bump there. He is not taken off, and the defensive back is right there on Irving. No place to throw the ball. Now it is Miami's turn. A 29-yard field goal attempt. And the punter, Fiegels, is the holder for Greg Cox. With the wind at his back, Cox puts Miami up by three. The Hurricanes strike first here in Tallahassee. We'll be right back. Miami will kick it off. Last year, early in the game, Florida State came up with this play. Do you remember it on the return? Here is Ross. He 
Fumbled on that sweep five yards deep. He's coming out. There's that famous lateral of Florida State's oh across God. field, and they've got an alley. He could go the distance. Dexter Carter is free. A year ago in Miami, and Ben is set to kick it off, and Jimmy Johnson said that play won't work this time. We have got a man covering both of the deep men. We'll see if Florida State doesn't have a new wrinkle. Well, that's one way. Drive it right out of the end zone. Let's go downstairs to John Docker. John? Brent, let me tell you what happened on that field goal, that botch field goal attempt. You see Marty Riggs behind me, number 51. Simply a case of the holder and the kicker not being ready. Riggs hearing a sound. It's incredibly loud down here, by the way, and snapping the ball when neither man was ready. They came over to him afterwards, the coaches did, and said, relax, calm down, it'll be okay. Now back to you. That, uh, sometimes they don't use sounds on field goals. Yeah, you really don't. Usually the quarterback, with the guy who was holding, will give you a hand signal that he is ready. So that doesn't, shouldn't happen. First and 10 for the Seminoles. McManus brings the offense to the 20. And it's Smith, and he broke a tackle. But when you think about what Sammy Smith could become as a tailback, he is one who possesses world-class speed, and he weighs more than 220 pounds, and they have been waiting and waiting here in Tallahassee for Smith to blossom. Last year, he was injured down in Miami. Well, he's a type of back you'd like to give the ball 25 times a game, but he has been getting nicked. He doesn't play well hurt. Eight yards to go for the first down. They'll run him again. You know who's over there. He will not get away from Mr. Stubbs. I think the way Stubbs plays, Brent, you have to run inside of him because he takes that tremendous upfield charge. Pat, that botched field goal seemed to take some of the life out of the crowd here, too. They're down. They trail by a field goal. And now Stubbs coming alive. So he's playing outside shade on the tight end. Very difficult to run outside on Stubbs. Got to bring it up inside. Third down. Again, McManus going into the win. And it's a stiff one. Off the draw. They run Smith. Great run by Smith. He breaks free. Goodbye. Oh, a tremendous tackle. He caught him. Bubba McDowell came after him and wouldn't quit. A 64-yard run by Smith. Brent, Florida State, again, cannot run the ball outside, but they really felt they could run it inside from tackle to tackle. And Sammy Smith can break some tackles for you. He gets a terrific block there by Pat Tomberlin, number 72, and then it's all uh, Smith as he breaks about four tackles. Now, it surprised me that he get caught from behind, but it showed you the tremendous speed that the Miami defensive backfield has. Oh, McDowell did a great job of catching Smith. First and 10 at the 18, and McManus throws complete to Carter and out of bounds. At the nine-yard line, Benny Blades covering the tailback. I had an opportunity to ask McManus, how do you beat this hurricane defense? The main thing is when they think we're going to run, we got to do the short little pass. When they think we're going for the short little pass, we got to go for a long pass. The main thing we do is just keep them guessing at what we're going to do. That's a positive thing that Coach Bowden's been expressing to us the whole week. Well, just, just what they did, it was third and 11 when they ran the draw. Now on second down, they split the backs, and they run Dexter Carter and Randy Shannon, the linebacker, ready for him. So they move the chains again, and they'll have a first and goal against Jimmy Johnson's defense. And this is the part of the field where you're really happy you have a tight end who's a big target who can receive the ball like Florida State does. Now, this first-team defense has not surrendered a touchdown this year. A point. Their two safeties came in the punting situation against Florida. The fullback and big Dane Williams. Stubbs finally rides him down. Dane 
Dane Williams is, is he's going to carry the defensive lineman stubs about four or five yards. But Dane Williams is a great short yardage runner. Six touchdowns already this season. Uh, Stubbs brags and brings him down from behind, but he's 250 pounds. But Williams says no. And that's all determination down to the two-yard line. The power backfield, an extra tight end giving them three as the referee runs in as time runs out on the first quarter. We've come to the end of the first quarter. Miami leads, but Florida State is threatening. College football on CBS returns after this message and a word from your local stations. It's the game of the week in college football, and it's here on CBS. Three versus four. Miami strikes first with a field goal in the opening quarter. Now, on a great run by Sammy Smith, who rushed for 103 yards in that first quarter, the Seminoles of Florida State have the ball at the one-yard line, second down. They rushed 17 times and passed only twice in the opening quarter. Dane Williams, the fullback, has been the short yardage first man for the Seminoles. Here he comes, behind the middle of the line with a second effort for the score. center. <laughs> Derek Schmidt set for the extra point. Perfect. This was a great drive Brent, because they did mix it up. They got the big run of course from Smith but mixed in two passes. It was culminated by this offensive line push. Good surge. No penetration there by that big defensive front and then the last half yard was all Williams. Good block by Salva the center. He gets off very quickly, cuts off his man, and Williams fights his way in for six points. Jackson, you've got competition for All-American at tight end. Pat Carter earlier blocked Stubbs. He's at the bottom of the screen outside. This time he comes right down inside and just buries Stubbs, number 96, on his back. That is a put down. And Pat Carter cleared the way for Williams. He's done a sensational job of blocking here in the first half. So Richie Andrews to kick it off for the Seminoles, who lead it 7-3. Leonard Conley and Randall Hill are deep. With the wind at his back, it'll be down for the touchback. Well, tomorrow, I don't have to tell you, is going to be a very special day as far as the NFL is concerned. Obviously, we've got stories that transcend football. What's going to happen at the various stadiums around the country at 12.30, we'll update it. Then these games all scheduled to be played tomorrow. How good are these teams? I don't think any of us know, so we'll watch with curiosity and see. The doubleheader game will feature Dallas and the Jets, Green Bay and Minnesota. So check your local listings, and we'll see you tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern time. Our coverage begins. Walsh is back on first down. He'll put it up, and he hits Blades. Blades cuts back, and he's down at the 25-yard line. Matthew Mayhew, number 32, the corner on that side against Benny's brother. There's the team we'll see next week, Oklahoma and Texas from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, one we look forward to. Well, Eric Metcalf is having a great year for the Longhorns, averaging 100 yards a game. I imagine Keith Jackson will be ready for one oh, yeah. too, right? Now with second and four yards to go, Williams battles his way out to the 29. I believe he is short of the first down. It'll depend on where they spot the ball. He did get close to it. You know, Brent, the Miami offensive line did a very nice job there. I don't think the Miami offensive line the last four or five years has really gotten enough credit. They've all talked about the quarterback. So those guys have done an unbelievable job the last few years of protecting the quarterback and then opening some big holes for the running backs. Double tight end on this third and one. Roberts and Henry to lead the way. Bratton is the fullback. Falling audible. Dangerous on third and one. 
They'll run Williams and he slips. He slips on third and one. Hayes did a good job of penetrating on that play. Fulton Hayes, number uh, Fulton Hayes, 46, gets upfield very, very quickly. He beat his man quickly, and then when the when the running back Williams tried to cut inside, he slipped on the turf. Now another punt for Jeff Fiegels, who was under heavy pressure, and this time he's going into the wind. Just Ooh. does get it off, and the Seminoles are getting closer and closer. Ball is down at the 37-yard line. A 35-yard punt. We talked about a lot of these players having grown up together, and they grew up down in South Florida. Now here's where these two schools are located, Tallahassee, the capital of this great state. A breakdown of the recruits shows this. Miami pretty much stays at home. Florida State roams down into South Florida and came away with 13 players. So those 13 are seeing many of their former teammates and competitors from the high school battles. Or the state of Florida lately has turned out so many great football players. There's complete on the far side to Pat Carter, who is out of bounds at the 47. An 11-yard gain. What a weapon to have a tight end who blocks like that and then gets out and can catch. And a very, he's at the right of the screen right down. And the reason he's open, because the, the, uh, the wide receiver on that side, Lewis, is double covered by the corner and the strong safety. And a nice read by McManus. He comes back and sees the strong the free safety is taking away the outside receiver and dumps the ball there to Carter. Easy throw. Out of Sarasota. Over on the West Coast. First down. And Carter. Stopped at midfield. <laughs> You can see why this Florida State uh, offense is difficult to defend because we've seen a little bit of everything. We've seen reverses. We've seen throwing the ball downfield. We've seen the tight end catch the ball. We've seen some off counter plays and some power football. They give you a lot. McFanis played his high school ball down in Hollywood at South Broward High School. He has the wind at his back and he's in a passing situation, but they have been running on passing down. This time, they will not. Quick throw over the middle complete. So Carter with another reception. Let's check in on the Michigan State game, and here's Jim Nance. Well, Brent, a surprise brewing in Iowa City. Third and four here for Michigan State. Bobby McAllister hits Mike Sargent for the touchdown. Two-point conversion failed. However, the Spartans lead it with eight minutes left. Let's go back to Brent and Pat. Bobby McAllister plays his best games at Iowa. I was in there a few years ago when he played havoc with the Hawkeyes. McManus will set the screen, and it's to Williams, the fullback. He's got a first down and then some. Busts inside the 35. Down to the 32-yard line before Myra brings him down. A 15-yard gain and a good play call. I'll tell you, a tremendous athletic play by Dane Williams. Then we saw him run tough down inside to score the touchdown. Here you're going to see a great catch. Then he picks up a terrific block by his center, number 63, Salva, and the wide receiver, Lewis. But watch the catch. I tell you, he's got very soft hands for a guy who can power the ball at you, too. 220 pounds. A couple of nice blocks by Salva and Lewis. Gainer and Lewis are the wide men. McManus, under pressure, avoids it. Incomplete, a dangerous throw. That was almost intercepted by Rod Carter. Bad decision for Danny McManus. Stubbs was coming after him. He would have been better off to chuck it out of bounds and not risk the interception. It's interesting. Bobby Bowden told us yesterday his philosophy was with his quarterback is do not get sacked on first and second down. Throw the ball away. But as you said, throw it out of bounds, not on the playing field. And I can remember you being pursued by too tall and Randy. And they <laughs> caught me most of the time, too, didn't they? <laughs> Here's second too down quick. and ten. Split backs for McManus. On the delay, it's Carter. Zigzags his way into the arms of George Myra Jr. <laughs> Columbia may break the Northwestern record after all. <laughs> You're hoping, aren't you? 
I would never Northwestern grad. <laughs> well, it's a third down and 10 yards to go here for Coach Bowden. In the last situation they in like this, they ran the big draw to Sammy Smith for the big game. Edgar Bennett is the fullback. He's 22. Stubbs may have gotten across the scrimmage line too quickly. Hawkins in on him. The ball was free. There was a penalty marker down. I think it was Tom Berlin, number 72 in motion, Brent. A fierce rush that time. And that's what Stubbs is motioning. That it was encroachment. So it'll be marked off and uh, Jimmy Johnson across the way. I think he wants it declined, Pat, if I'm not sh mistaken by his signal. But I think the referees were calling the play dead. That was that's that's the dispute now. You're right, they would have de declined it. Yep, dead ball. Yeah. Movement yeah, on the right, offensive Pat. line. Just the offense. Still third down. So the ball is moved back to the 38-yard line. Well, with Florida State now has the wind behind them, remember, and I think all they really need to do is try to get seven or eight yards, maybe, to put themselves in position to try a field goal. They don't need to really get it all. Now, they have a wrinkle in that wide receiver around when they bring him. They can throw off of that. That's one play that we did see them practice. Said they run a draw play and he is stuffed. Ooh. Carter couldn't find any running room that time. Mr. Stubbs stuffed him too, Brent. Nine minutes and 42 seconds remaining here in the first half. Florida State leading Miami by a score of seven to three. Along with John Dockery and Pat Hayden, I'm Brent Musburger. Number three, Miami against number four, Florida State. Tootin's punt. And it'll bounce down at the one. Florida State could not get to it and down it. Go in for the touchback. Come out at the 20. I tell you, that is one of my pet peeves, though, when a punter doesn't punt the ball out of the end, uh, on, on the 10-yard line. When you punt the ball into the end zone, you just give it up 20 yards. you got to punt the ball out of bounds. Smith's 64 yard run. The Seminoles have gained only seven yards on six carries. What about that story, John Dockery? Well, let me just tell you about Sammy Smith. He seems to be okay. Bobby Bowden just came over and asked him, Is he okay? He's shaking up a little bit. Might have been a little fatigued from the run, but Brent, he just shook his head that he's fine. We expect to see him back. All now right. back to you. Now it's Steve Walsh for the first down for Miami at the 20. Goes to the sideline incomplete. Brian Blades, the intended receiver over there. So Steve Walsh follows in the line of great quarterbacks at Miami. Jimmy Johnson was not there when Jim Kelly was there. And then Bernie Kosar led Howard Schnellenberger to a national championship in 83. Enter Jimmy Johnson and Vinny Testaverde became the quarterback. And they were beaten by Penn State in that great Fiesta Bowl. Which led to the Nittany Lions title. Off the draw play, it is Bratton. And Bratton out to the 23 yard line with Mayhew tackling him. Oklahoma again impressive, and they figure to stay number one. Auburn with trouble. Tennessee's a pretty good ball club. Penn State on the comeback. They've got an appointment up in Syracuse in a couple of weeks that might be interesting. Third down. Walsh changing the call. He's got six yards for the first. This is Williams. It was well defended. Individual effort by Williams. But Kevin Grant, the linebacker, number 47, got in on him initially. 
Steve Walsh audibled here to the, to the option play. He thought he could get the ball outside, but there's too many defenders on the perimeter of the defense. When there are that many uh, red jerseys on the outside, you got to run the ball up inside the tight end. There's well, the Seminoles have been close, rushing Fiegel's twice. Let's see what happens this time. There's a lone back, a 10-man front. Gets it off high to Sanders, a superb punt returner at the 35. Beautiful return by Deion Sanders to the 48-yard line. A 16-yard return off a 38-yard punt, giving McManus and the Seminole offense good field position. So, Pat, how about an overview of this game uh, for these two teams? We'll break away for a commercial. We'll come back, and we'll do that in a moment. To the governor of the state of Florida here in Tallahassee, early on a Saturday morning, you can walk downstairs, and then you can take a pleasant walk, and come on inside Doak Campbell Stadium. It's the hottest ticket in Tallahassee. Now, Pat, an overview on this game so far. I've really been surprised how well Florida State has run the football. We expected them to throw the ball well, but I'm really surprised they, they had the big play by Sammy Smith. Now, Victor Floyd... His first appearance this year, slowed by injuries, he has checked in at tailback, and they run Edgar Bennett, the fullback, straight ahead. And again, more successful running by the Seminoles. And again, if you'll notice, it is inside the tackles. They've really done a nice job inside with a guard and centers, two, uh, two guards in the center, controlling the inside. Hand signals to Danny McManus. If you were with us last week, Ohio State had some difficulty with the 25-second clock. They were shuttling wide receivers in and out. Marion butts the fullback. Oh, hammered at that line of scrimmage that time by Stubbs. I'll tell you, Stubbs' upper body is so strong. When you see him just practice, he's got those huge hands, and he just can just push you over and make the play. Very strong upper upper body. And you can see that the uh, Florida State offensive line has done a nice job of uh, giving their backs some holes. Well, here is third and short. If Bobby Bowden is true to his word, he'll come up firing here. Oh, a great play by McManus. First down. They are just so difficult to defend. The, the impromptu, the unexpected play is just very difficult to defend. You're going to see McManus right here. He's the quarterback. He's going to fake the ball and then just run a naked bootleg. Now, again, it's a third and about a two or three situation. Everybody's expecting either your tailback to get the ball. They set this up by running the pitch earlier, and then he keeps it himself on the backside. That was so good, you wonder if he even told the team what he was going to do that time. The way that was carried out. Now Floyd with his first carry to the 33-yard line, and Myra tackles him. When, you, when an offense does that, runs reverses and bootlegs, the weak side linebacker must stay at home, or Bobby Bowden will continue to do that to you. So Victor Floyd, three deep at that tailback spot behind McManus. Gainer is wide receiver to the left. Time remaining, first half. Floyd cuts inside against the defense. The defense left a gap and some strong blocking. And he appears to be short of that first down. He had to get to the 25-yard line for a first down. Myra, again, who has been active at middle linebacker, bringing him down. Again, one more time, they ran right at uh, Dan Stubbs that time, Brent. And again, he's because when he's over the tight end, he takes an outside charge, and then they come inside of him. Let him take himself out of the play. They run Bennett. Needing to get to the 25-yard line. You know, there is a new image for the Miami Hurricanes on campus, somewhat quieter, and I asked Danny Stubbs if that was the way they wanted it. I'd say we tone down, like, some of our actions, but um, this is still the same kind of team we have, hard-hitting and talking. 
And from the past years, we established like a, um, a, a reputation for ourselves, and we carry it on even this year. Looking forward to the NFL? I can't wait to get there. <laughs> <laughs> they can't wait to have you either, big fella. If you don't do that, you can do voiceovers. That's one of the great voices. First and ten for the Seminole. They run the delay with the tail. Victor Floyd, the junior from Pensacola. And again, it is Myra. He's having himself a day. Well, in a 4-3 defense, your middle linebacker has to be a guy who can run, who can play both a pass and the run. And Myra has done that this year for the defense. Covers a lot of ground inside. Nine tackles already with his father here in attendance. Those of you who remember his dad as a quarterback, he was one of the most entertaining quarterbacks in college football. He could dazzle you with those moves. Sammy Smith's back in. Let's see if they go to him right away. They do, faking the end around. And Smith gets to the 20-yard line where Jimmy Jones was there. So again, they bring the fake of the end around, and somebody has to go with him defensively. Let's present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to those players who've been singled out for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions and academics. Today's leadership winners are, from Miami, Selwyn Brown, their strong safety. He's a business management major from St. Petersburg. And David Palmer from Florida State, a pre-med major from Tallahassee here. Toyota donates a check for $1,000. A quick pass coming outside to Edgar Bennett is incomplete. I was... Auburn beats North Carolina by 10. Let me finish up on that Toyota. A check in the amount of $1,000 goes to each school's general scholarship fund, so congratulations to both those players. I don't think Jimmy Johnson has got enough credit as a head coach. We, we hear about all the problems that he's had there, but he's in a marvelous job of getting these guys ready to play, and he's now graduating over 70% of his athletes. He took over, and they were graduating some 20%. That's a tremendous improvement. The snap is bobbled, but McManus gets it down in time for Schmidt, and he kicks a 36-yard field goal. Credit McManus. Superb job as the holder that time. So that's next Saturday. Here are the game of the week, Miami and Florida State with the Seminoles leading 10-3 and Andrews set to kick it off. And now we're going to see Miami trying to come from behind with the young quarterback. That's a different position. Hammers another one deep with the wind at his back. So it'll come out on the 20-yard line. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. Doc? Thank you, Brent. I'm with uh, Jamie Dukes from the Atlanta Falcons the Center, and of course, you have an unexpected weekend off, an unwanted weekend off. What's the status of the strike now? Well, as of right now, I think things are still up in the air. Uh, we're hoping for some movement. Uh, supposedly, sometime this weekend, we're supposed to be getting together with management, and uh, hopefully things will work out. Is Atlanta holding together? Oh, yeah, we're real, we're real strong. You know, we've got a, a good, solid group, and Mike Ken and uh, Mick Luckers are really leading us, and so things are working out with us. And we'll find out as they're going to play this weekend. Okay, Brent. All right, John, thank you. Now first and ten for the Canes of the 20. Walsh will put it up. Good protection. Out of bounds. He overthrew Charles Henry on that far sideline. He is throwing the ball a little bit high. I think, I don't know whether it's the wind that's affecting him, the ball is taking off, or he's not really following through and delivering the ball, but the ball is, is taking off on Steve Walsh. He's throwing now three passes high. Steve Walsh is out of St. Paul, Minnesota. He has stepped in, won his first two games. That is something that none of their more famous quarterbacks were able to do. But he faces a test here this afternoon. Again, good protection down the middle for Blades. Complete, and Brian Blades still battling. Comes down at the 45, and he juggled the ball on that last hit. That's a 26-yard gain. The things that have always impressed me about these Miami receivers is their ability to go over the middle. They're fearless. They're very tough receivers over the middle. And there's a watch the good protection here for Walsh, and then he's going to step up into the pocket. We talked about the protection that all the quarterbacks will receive. This one is well thrown over the middle, and then Blades out tough some defenders there for two more yards. On first down, under 
pressure and brought down by Shelton Thompson, number 93. Now you can see Walsh wanting a timeout when he got up. Now that's only the third sack this year against Miami. Thompson responsible for it, and the Canes use a timeout. At Miami. We mentioned the first two games. He won them both. And look what he had in comparison with the other three. Now he is wearing uniform number four. Last year he was number one, but he traded it because he said number one exudes cockiness. And I do not want to appear cocky in this role. I'll do the best I can, but I am not Benny Testaverde. Hands it off to Bratton. And Bratton is down at the 43 yard line. 140 left, and Miami has two timeouts. Remember, they're going against the wind again, so they're going to have to get the ball up near the 20-yard line if they hope to get anything on the board. Mel Bratton was the fullback the day of the Doug Flutie game in the Orange Bowl. So here's a big down for Steve Walsh. He steps up beautifully to Irvin. Complete. They convert their first third down situation. Clock is stopped as the chains move. A 22 yard gain. That was a sensational patience. The slot man here is Irvin's going to come down and run the post, but the key really was when Walsh stepped up into the pocket. Without a huddle, they move quickly up. And the whistle sounded on the play before the snap. There was a whistle. Walsh takes that opportunity to go over to the sideline as the, the Seminoles call the timeout alertly before the ball was snapped. Now let's take a look at these two fine schools, Miami and Florida State, which is located right here in Tallahassee. It's critical here. We get two timeouts with 110. There's plenty of time to run and throw the ball. Great pattern by Irvin stops the clock as he stepped out of bounds there an 11 yard gain he also got the first down so Walsh looking very confident and poised on this drive so far for coach Johnson and the Canes Michael Irvin has run two very disciplined routes the last couple of plays only use six seconds for that play to start at 104 against the blitz and that set up the hit Paul McGowan cleans up Terry Warren was there the pressure came from the inside and Brent I don't think you can run play action passes on a two minute drill everybody knows you're going to throw the ball let the quarterback drop back and get his protection but but, but watch how he's going to run the play action fake here off ta at tackle and the middle linebacker is going to come up and get a piece of him. But again, it's a two minute drill. I think you dr give your quarterback the best. He can see the whole field by dropping straight back and he maybe gets rid of the ball. They have a tremendous tradition of great players here at Florida State. None better, of course, than Freddie Bolitnikoff before he went on to start him in the National Football League. He was a star here at Florida State back in 1962. Here he is, 57 passes. This one thrown by Steve Tensey. Then, of course, he played for the Raiders. Daryl LaMonica, the Mad Bomber, threw him a lot of scoring passes like that. Now, he's a coach in Calgary with the Stampeders, and he remembers what this rivalry is like. You know, years years ago, you know, I, when, you know, we played him down there when uh, Steve Tensey was our quarterback, George Myra was their quarterback, we upset him in, in the Orange Bowl. That's the year, you know, we, you know, we went to the Gator Bowl that year and won. I even intercepted a pass off of Myra. 99 yards in the end zone to the other, down the sideline, picked it off. That was a defensive back. <laughs> They'd like to have him in that secondary right now, facing Walsh and the Canes, who dropped back. Wanted Bratton, got the ball up high, and the blow is being delivered by number 44, John Weish. That ball hung again on Walsh. He's got to get some more zip on the ball, otherwise the defensive backs are going to kill the receivers. 
20 men on the field. They get off on the far side for Miami. Walsh, there's penalty markers oh. down. He hit oh. Henry at the 15. The linesman threw the flag. That would have been a 17-yard gain. Someone had jumped off sides. But I'll tell you, that was a sensational throw there by Walsh. And a great catch by Henry. Big penalty. Oh, boy. It's again, they're going against the win. That would have put them in at least field goal position. You know, as a quarterback, sometimes you really get rushed in this situation when you have more time than you think. Now the ball is put down at the 38. So this will be a third and 24 for Walsh. Pick up maybe 10 or 15 yards, use a timeout, and kick a field goal. What was critical was that penalty might have taken them out of field goal range going into the win. That's what's going to hurt even more. Walsh against heavy pressure incomplete. The rush was on that time. Stan Shiver, a safety blitz. Florida State, here is Shiver right here. Florida State puts most of their pressure on the passer out of the nickel defense, and that's what this is. Shiver lines up like he's going to be covering the back, gets a nice jump on the ball, and then beats the tackle to the outside. Walsh it had Irvin open, but Walsh had to throw it before he wanted to. Six seconds and fourth down, and there's going to be a timeout called here by Florida State. So they're out of field goal range against the win. And Walsh will take the opportunity to go across the way and confer with the Miami coaches. And, of course, coming up at halftime, the Prudential College Football Report with Jim Nance. A lot of football this weekend. Tomorrow such a rare day. Uh, Pat, do you have any thoughts about what we might see tomorrow around the NFL? Well, I'm afraid you're going to see a lot of violence outside the stadiums. Well, let's hope not. These are the games that are scheduled to be played. And it is a doubleheader day on CBS. Dallas against the Jets and Green Bay against Minnesota. And we'll be on the air at 1230. Eastern time to see what the situation is at the time. You know, Brent, when you were talking about Freddie Bolitnikoff a little while ago, he was he defined the term possession receiver. How many third and six and eight passes did he catch over the years? Not only here at Florida State, but in the pros as well. Walsh with a headset on. He is checking with the offensive coordinator up in the booth. Now it is fourth and 23. Your philosophy here is maybe either throw the ball into the end zone and maybe come up with a big play with with Michael Irvin or perhaps a penalty which would put you in field goal position. That's their two hopes. Six seconds. Split backs. Blades, Irwin, and Andre Brown, the three wideouts. Down the sideline, incomplete. You have to keep the ball in play to give Brian Blades a chance to go up and get it. So it'll go over to the Seminoles with three seconds left, and Florida State will go into the locker room ahead at halftime. If there's a surprise so far, it has been the performance of the Florida State defensive unit. And the way they've run the ball, Brent. This defensive unit, Pat, may be stronger than we thought they were. Well, you know, you always think about Florida State throwing the ball all over the field, but they do have some very good athletes on the defensive side of the ball this year. Well, Miami scored first, and then it was that man right there, Sammy Smith, who turned the game around. His long run late in the first quarter ignited the Seminoles, and they went on to score 10 points. This was the run right here. As he ran for more than 100 yards, 64 of them right here on the draw play. Watch the individual effort as he breaks a tackle. And then.
in somewhat surprisingly. He is cut from behind as Bubba McDowell runs him down, but it still set up a touchdown for Florida State. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local stations. CBS Sports presents the Prudential College Football Report. Sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. With the right choices, with the right guidance, the sky is the limit. The Prudential, your rock in financial services. Well, welcome back to New York. The Prudential College Football Report. If there's a theme today in college football, a lot of teams opening conference play. As we show you now, as we go to the top ten, Oklahoma opening its Big Eight play against Iowa State. Not much of a game here. Anthony Stefford has scored for three, uh, three touchdowns for the Sooners there. But Jamel Holloway, another big day for the quarterback, the wishbone wizard. Ten carries, 88 yards. He's already out of the game. Scored once on those ten carries and threw for two touchdown passes. Now, Nebraska's going against South Carolina. This game's supposed to kick here in the next couple of minutes. Number six, Auburn, a winner today at North Carolina, 20 to 10, taking advantage of four pass interceptions by Mark May. And Jeff Berger had two touchdown passes for Auburn there in that victory. Ohio State out in front of Illinois. That's in the first quarter. Tom Tupa has the Buckeye touchdown from five yards out. Tenth ranked Tennessee. Rough week for the Volunteers, who were accused of covering up an in house investigation. However, today, nothing but a lot of things to cheer about for the home folks taking on the Cal uh, Golden Bears. And here, Reggie Cobb. This guy is getting better by the week. He's only a freshman, and he scored three touchdowns today. Johnny Majors has a major league quarterback as well, major talent here. His name is Jeff Francis. Today, 21 out of 26, 222 yards. The screen here goes to Cobb. Again, Cobb with three touchdowns of the game. Tennessee wins it, and Johnny Majors 4-0-1. It's his best start since coming to Tennessee in 1977. Now tonight, Florida will play at LSU. The Tigers will open defense of their SEC crown in a big battle at Baton Rouge. Two top ten teams off today. Notre Dame, next week will take on Pitt and Clemson, idle as well. Now other games involving ranked teams, UCLA in front of Stanford, 6 to nothing in the first quarter there. Michigan just rolled it up in the first half over Wisconsin. It was 42 to nothing at one time. Jamie Morris played only about two quarters, 18 carries, 182 yards, and three touchdowns for Jamie Morris. Temple and Penn State has just gone final. The Nittany Lions haven't lost to the Owls now since uh, Pearl Harbor. But the big story for the Nittany Lions, the running back Blair Thomas. Here's a guy who will be a Heisman contender next year. Thomas had his career high, 24 carries, 167 yards, and two touchdowns. Texas A&M and Texas Tech. Here's a big upset. A&M back-to-back SWC winners. Today opening Southwest Conference play with a loss in Lubbock. And Wayne Walker catches the 76-yard touchdown pass from Billy Joe Tolliver to make it 14 to nothing and not even five minutes had elapsed in this game and Tolliver went out for a few minutes his backup came in Scott Toman hit Irvin Ferris seven yard score and the Red Raiders hold on to win it by the score of 27 to 21 and the Aggies again open conference play with a loss Michigan State and Iowa here's an upset number 17 uh, Iowa losing to Michigan State Hawkeyes had not lost a Big Ten opener since 1979. Uh, they opened the game at quarterback with Danny McGuire, and he was hot early. The touchdown pass there gave him 14-7 lead, the Hawkeyes, but in the second half, he just wasn't effective at all. This is Lorenzo White picking up 19 yards. He had 39 carries today, 166 yards and a touchdown. But here's the game winner. Eight minutes left. McAllister goes to Mike Sargent. And Michigan State wins it 19 to 14 in the Big Ten opener for both teams there. And Georgia and Mississippi. Lars Tate has dressed, has not played. Tate, the number two rusher in the United States, but Georgia hasn't needed him so far. Bulldogs leading at Old Miss by the score of 10 to nothing. Now stay with us for more results as the Prudential College Football Report continues with scores from around the country. Football report with some teams that are kind of down and out in college football, if you will. Of course, you have to start out with Columbia. The Lions are going to lose today. Their losing streak will tie Northwestern's losing streak at 34 in a row. Now, Davidson 
is going to lose to Dartmouth. It's a final now. It's just gone final. The Wildcat losing streak is at 16. Virginia Tech and Navy now coming into today's play. Navy and Kansas had the longest Division I losing streak at 10, but now Navy's losing streak matches its total today 11 in a row now for the midshipmen on the short end of the score. Speaking of Kansas, the last time the Jayhawks won was against Southern Illinois, but the Saluki's leading right now at halftime in that game. Here's a contest between two schools that were 0-7 coming in and had been outscored by a total of 292 to 91, but it's Tulsa taking it out right now on K-State at halftime. Now you talk about the other side of it. Syracuse, what a success story this year. Best start since 1960. Tied up with Missouri, though, 10-10 on the road, the Orange today. Both teams in this game have committed four turnovers in the first half, so real sloppy, and it's a 10-10 tie there. Now, Big Ten opener for Northwestern and Indiana. Hoosiers lead it. Next week, the Hoosiers will go against the Ohio State Buckeyes. NC State today shut out Georgia Tech. First time in 54 games that the Yellow Jackets had been shut out. West Virginia, 49 to nothing over East Carolina. Freshman quarterback Major Harris today threw for two scores, ran for another. Kentucky over Ohio, a fourth quarter there, late going. It's Kentucky homecoming day, and they are taking advantage of that. Wake Forest won at Army, best start for the Demon Deacons since 1967. The great Army quarterback, though, the man who runs the wishbone, Torrey Crawford, went out with a knee sprain, will be out for four weeks. Weeks. His backup, Mark Mooney, came in, put Army in front in the fourth quarter with that one-yard keeper at 13 to 10. But under three minutes to go, Wake Forest playing on the road had their outstanding quarterback, Mike Elkins. So Ricky Prohl, 27-yard score. That was the winner. And Wake Forest is now 4-0 and on the season next week visiting North Carolina. Let's get to the Ivies, where today Brown takes on Princeton, and Brown wins it to go now 3-0 and on the year. Harvard over Bucknell. This game in the late going. Harvard 2-0 and on the season, trying to increase its record to 3-0. and Holy Cross and Colgate, the 50th meeting between these two schools. Now, Gordy Lockbaum got so much of the preseason attention for Holy Cross, but right now, he might not even be the MVP on his own team, so how could you give him the Heisman Trophy? Jeff Wiley, the quarterback, last week threw for seven touchdowns. Already in this game, he's thrown for two more scores, and or make that three scores now, and 300 yards passing. Jeff Wiley, the real story now for the Crusaders, who are ranked number one in Division One AA. Let's move out west now. Utah and Air Force. Air Force winning over the use. Air Force cannot afford another loss in the WAC. They opened the season with a loss against Wyoming, but winning today by three scores. Battle out in the Rocky Mountain State. It's uh, Colorado beating the Rams there by 16. Wyoming and San Diego State. This is a game that's supposed to be a real air war at Wyoming, and the Cowboys lead it by four in the second quarter. And in baseball, Toronto and Detroit coming into the day's play in the American League East, all tied. Of course, the regular season ends tomorrow. What a game this is. Sixth inning, all tied at two apiece. Now, when we come back, we'll take a look at how some of the Florida State players are keeping the Barbers in Tallahassee busy as we continue on the College Football Report. Here at halftime on the College Football Report, Ohio State, Mike France has, Matt France has kicked the field goal. Second quarter now, Buckeyes leading it by 10 at Illinois. And also UCLA and Stanford. UCLA lost last year, by the way, to Stanford, avenging that now with three field goals in the second quarter. Now, last night, Brigham Young beat Utah State by the score of 45 to 24. But the real story of the game was senior defensive back Kirk Davis of BYU. Earlier this season, Davis learned he had Hodgkin's disease, a form of cancer. But despite the seriousness of this illness, Davis says his strong Mormon faith will keep him going. When the doctor told me it, uh, it didn't really shock me. It's, um, I just looked at it as something I'm going to have to get through. I guess it's from my missionary background, being shocked by so many people, things that people have said, you know, things that people believe. I guess it's just my religion that uh, makes me not really shocked about, not worry about it. Last week, Davis not only recovered a fumble, but he intercepted this pass and returned it for a touchdown in the Cougars' victory over New Mexico. I saw the ball come all the way from his hands right to mine, and I just said, nobody's going to catch me now. I'm just going to go. So I took it and went. Doctors believe they have caught the cancer in its earliest stages. But yesterday, Davis was informed he would need an operation, and he still played. The doctors told me my... Uh, 
options. The team said get healthy. Um, Lavelle said get healthy. The doctors gave me the option to play next week, my last game. And so I took that option to help the team because I know their need for defensive backs right now. But I don't let anything uh, slow me down. It's probably just something in my family. Uh, we never give up, and I'll never give up on this, and I know I can beat it. And if I come back this year, you know, that's fine. If not, I'll work out, and I'll be stronger and bigger and better for next year. Davis will play next week against Wyoming and undergo his operation on October 12th. All of us here at CBS Sports wish him the very best. Now, before we send you back to that game in Tallahassee, this fashion note, in picking its nickname, Florida State chose to honor Florida's original native sons, the Seminole Indians. But when it comes to hairstyles, the Seminoles march to a different beat, the one heard on those drums along the Mohawk. First glance at the Florida State team photo, you may not catch the current hair-raising issue in Tallahassee. But once you go behind the scene, you do take notice. I mean, we just sitting around one day and decided we want to do some something off the wall for uh, what we think is going to be a big year. Most of us are seniors. And our last year, we wanted to look a little crazy going out. So far, more than 20 players have been clipped. But the real buzz on this club is if they stay razor sharp and unbeaten, Coach Bobby Bowden will join the ranks. He said if we went 11-0, and 0, he'd, uh, he'd shave his head in Mohawk. Well, I tell you, it couldn't get any uglier. But I think the odds are so great, I don't think I have to worry about it. We took this a step further. This is Bobby Bowden now. We got with our artist, and should they go 11-0, and 0, the Seminole coach will look <laughs> just like this on January 1st. Bobby Bowden, if his team wins all the regular season games, the Mohawk is coming. And back out at the remote, that is a picture that's been put together by the Florida State players. They They're thinking now a perfect season. And again, Bobby Bowden says he'll keep the promise alive and he'll get the haircut as well. Well, they're leading right now, Florida State 10 to 3, and we'll send you back to the second half in just a moment. I'm Jim Nance in New York. Thanks again for watching the Prudential College Football Report on CBS. It's been a tough defensive game here in Tallahassee with the Seminoles leading the Miami Hurricanes 10-3. I'm Brent Musburger along with Pat Hayden. And uh, Pat, what are some of the stats that jump out at you? Well, the play selection, I think it's an interesting thing. Although uh, uh, Florida State has only thrown seven passes, they've been successful on five of those. You came in thinking that you were going to have to really defend the pass. You see, they've run 31 plays. Now, Miami is well balanced, but they have not run the ball well. Now, if we look ahead to the second half, what must they do? I think what Miami has to do is come out with the drive and really try to drive the ball with, with the running attack. They haven't gotten any production out of that, but to get Walsh and give him some help is to run the ball well. And somewhat surprisingly has been the performance of the Florida State defense. Against the run, they have been stringing it out, and the longest run against Florida State in the first half was five yards. Now, we have seen Bratton take over and dominate a game in the past, but not here this afternoon against the Seminoles, Pat. Well, this play was designed to go off tackle, Brent, but they've forced the, the defense forces him to bounce it outside. They force him to, Brad, to bounce the ball outside and right into their speed, their secondary. Sanders, number two, comes up and makes a very good tackle on a man who's difficult to bring down in the open field, and that's Bratton. All right, so while we've got an opportunity, let's send you down below now to John Duckery. John? Thank you, Brent. I just talked to Jimmy Johnson. He said the problem is, as you said, at the line of scrimmage. They haven't been able to run the ball. He said, we will come out throwing in the second half. We need better field position. It's been a problem. The defense from AS, FSU has dominated, but he said, you'll see us throw the ball a lot more in the second half. Now back to you. All right, John, thank you. Well, Jimmy Johnson normally has had difficulty with Florida State in the first half. Nothing unusual there, but we'll see if they can rally after this break and a word from your local stations. Florida State to get the ball with a 10-3 lead to start the second half. Bennett to kick it off for the Hurricanes. The wind at Miami's back, which means that Florida State will have it there for the final quarter. A very important factor. Fielded by Carter. Cuts back. Out to the 31-yard line. A slick return by Dexter Carter. And Sammy Smith, number 33, will open at tailback this half for Florida State. Well, Brian, we'll see what kind of adjustments the defense makes here because they really didn't come up with many negative plays there in the first half. That's characteristic, ordinarily, of the Miami defense. Marion Butts is the fullback set in front of him. Lewis and Gaynor, the wide receivers. Smith on first down. Gets to the 35-yard line before Randy Shannon 
who was battling an injured ankle, brought him down. They open up with the same play, really, that, that he ran the long play on, and that is Smith when he ran for 70 yards or 60 yards. Same play open up the second half with. Well, there's the first ever Division Three team to win 500, and congratulations to Wittenberg. And meanwhile, Columbia loses for the 34th straight time. Edgar Bennett in at fullback. McManus runs the draw again, and it's good for a first down out to the 44-yard line. Bennett, the ball carrier, and Carter tackles him. Okay, a draw is a terrific call against a four-man line when you have aggressive defensive front because the Miami defense really likes to come upfield. And this was a terrific call on second and long to give the ball to Bennett on the draw, and he picks up the first down. Good defense against Bennett that time. They were ready for him. Bill Hawkins led the way. So this will be a passing situation on second down. And it was in a similar setting against the wind that Florida State shocked Miami with a draw play that bolted free for 64 yards. This time he throws quickly to the wide out. Lewis on that far side, and he is defended by Donald Ellis. Well, that's a dangerous throw against this defense because those defensive corners can really drive you, uh, drive on the ball. It's yeah, too risky. Yeah. hung that one yeah. in the air. That's a too risky of a throw for a two-yard game. Now a third and seven situation. Florida State earlier in the first half threw a screen pass here, Brent, to Dean Williams for a big play. his protection and he takes off dumps it to the tight end great catch at the 40 by Pat Carter number 85 <laughs> 13 yard gain for a first down Danny McManus does a nice job of buying himself a little extra time here a very good rush by the Miami defense he steps up into the pocket avoids a, a little bit of rush and then finds Carter then he'll make a terrific catch. And actually, he's signaling that he catches the ball before he even hits the ground. Uh, Carter is playing like an All-America here this afternoon, isn't he? First and ten. Some great tight ends in college football. We'll see Keith Jefferson next week. And they bang with Sammy Smith. And a big bang. Brought down by Selwyn Brown. Second down, and about four yards here for the first down. McManus getting the play from Bobby Bowden's sideline. Slips, gets back up, and throws incomplete. Pat, what's interesting is that in passing situation so far in the second half, both of Bowden's backs have been going out into patterns, which means that the coaches upstairs think that that offensive line can handle the rush. Well, they're, they're running short routes, too, and McManus has done a nice job of getting rid of the ball quickly. And there he did a nice job avoiding the sack. Again, it's one of Bobby Bowden's rules. Don't take a sack on second down. McManus eyeing the sideline for that hand signal. Now the change in personnel as Dane Williams and a timeout is used here by Florida State. Bobby Bowden not happy about it, but he'll use one anyway. Presents college football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America. Today's Chevrolet. Michelob Light. When the sun goes down, light up the night with Michelob Light. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. 
Florida State's football team wasn't much in the 50s, but they had a great drama department here in Tallahassee, and they turned out a very <laughs> well-known actor by the name of Burt Reynolds. What you may not know is he was also a running back here for several seasons, and we now welcome Burt, who is perhaps the most loyal follower of this football program. Burt, nice to have you with us this afternoon. You, How Brent. do you think this game's going so far? Well, it's going exactly the way I wanted it to go. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, shocked that Bobby isn't throwing the ball more, but uh, he wanted to take the strength to the strength, and uh, he has Sammy Smith in there, which is also kind of a surprise, but he's our big back, and he's doing a great job. I know you were down on the field with uh, some of the players, and you were over in the locker room. What was the mood with the Seminoles before this game began? They were amazingly loose. I was surprised. I, I didn't see any of those heads banging into lockers that we always do in movies and stuff like that. They were very loose. I, I said to uh, McManus, you, you own Miami, you know? And he said, yeah, I know. So what do you can say? There is a clock problem here right now, and that's why we're having to delay down on the field. And uh, Bert, I know that you have made it a point to come to the games back here. In fact, even scheduling your movie career around that. But tell us about the time that you went out there with the flaming spear and threw it down at midfield at night. That must have been a great throw. Well, that is a, that's an amazing uh, feeling of power. You know, you hold that spear up and 70,000 people stand up. It's, it's quite, uh, quite amazing. It's better than an Oscar. I can say that because I've never won one. Well, stay right here with us and watch a few plays with us, Bert. Nice to have you alongside us here. We've got third down now for your Seminoles, who have played very well, and McManus pulls out. Complete. He hits Gainer at the 21-yard line, defended by Benny Blades. A 13-yard gain, and there's that pass play you wanted, Bert. Well, he's been setting it up all day. The key here was, again, very good protection for McManus, and he gets rid of the ball so quickly. Gaynor started on the outside and found a dead spot right there in the middle of the field, and then McManus just drilled it. The key was the protection, and McManus getting back and getting rid of the ball very, very quickly. And a big hit by Blades after the reception. So McManus, 8 of 11 for 74 yards now with the first down. And here he is running Carter, who slips and is tripped up there at the 20. So when Brown coming in on him. For the national championship, what's your feeling about that as far as this team is concerned? Well, I think uh, they've proven a lot today if they go on like they are. And uh, I saw where Michigan State upset uh, 